Hi, everybody. Welcome to our first episode of In Case You Missed It. Uh, yesterday, we went over Comic Life Part 1, focusing specifically on using the scripting options within Comic Life to pre-write and organize a narrative. Now, this is a very skill-focused use of Comic Life. In an ELA or foreign language uh, classroom, Comic Life can be used to write scripts and have students demonstrate different language use or to tell a story. That kind of assessment is going to really heavily fall on evaluating the skill. So writing the script ahead of time is going to be really important so that students can be guided with your formative feedback as they go through the drafting uh, design and then final production phases. If you're really out to assess content, I can see where teachers might skip the scripting phase. So I'll have a video that follows up on this later. Um, if you're really after assessing content, what you are probably looking for is students using pictures um, and perhaps adding speech bubbles to explain the pictures or visuals that are in the comic book. That doesn't necessarily require all that much planning or organization that might go into um, perhaps a really well-developed plot structure. Um, but take a look uh, later on for another Tech Tuesday and another In Case You Missed It video uh, that really focuses on getting the content right or getting the design right in Comic Life. With that being said, let's start taking a look at Comic Life. You'll notice that I've started with Finder and I'm under Applications. Comic Life 3 will be in that Applications folder. When Comic Life launches, you'll notice that you have um, a number of templates, very similar to how Pages is laid out. And uh, the ones that we focused on with Comic Life Part 1 scripting uh, were the actual script templates. It's worth taking a note at how scripting works um, by looking at an intro script and how it behaves. So let's start there. When Comic Life launches a new script, it looks like a very basic text editor. You've got some options to make the text bigger up in the top, which I'm going to start by doing so that everybody can see this well. And uh, other than that, you don't have too many formatting options. What I do want to point out along the left-hand side are uh, these icons. These are icons that are triggered by keywords. So in this case, in the scripting and comic life, this AVC is triggered by the title keyword. You'll see a caption is triggered by the word caption. SFX triggers kind of that whammo, pow, onomatopoeia type uh, wording that is typical of a comic book. And then your dialogue, uh, the speech bubbles, are triggered by names followed by colons. This layout is really helpful because as you start to write and organize, um, these keywords help you design your comic book, which I'll show you in just a minute. But let's first take a look at how this works. Um, we have this sample script. Uh, these elements here are parts that are actually going to be visual. I want to explain a couple comic book characteristics. Of course, we know that the title will be what it is across the top of a comic book, so uh, that might be Superman uh, Edition 1. Um, captions are going to show up as boxes in comic books. Captions are usually reserved for narration that the author needs to uh, give readers so that some of the background information is presented. SFX, again, are those onomatopoeia sounds like the krang. And uh, the dialogue is going to be what really drives um, the plot of a story. So if you're thinking about using Comic Life to evaluate writing, uh, make sure that you uh, keep in mind that a lot of uh, the language, a lot of the telling of the story is going to have to come through dialogue, either a first-person narrator, um, either thought bubbles, or the actual speech of the characters in there. Let's say that I want to add another character to John and Sarah's discussion. Um, we'll call that character Jim. When I type out Jim's name and I use a colon and then I add a space or I add a tab, 
which keeps everything lined up just that little bit better. You'll notice that you have a new speech bubble appear here. Now I'm ready to add the text. Let's say that I wanted Sarah to add a thought here. Take a look at the handout that was provided with this in case you missed it episode. Um, that handout is going to be very useful to give you an idea of the keywords that help trigger different objects in the comic book. If you take a look up in the top right corner, you'll see different keywords. You'll notice that we can add parentheses and whisper uh, to make Sarah whisper something, and that'll show up in your design later. The other thing that you can do is change that to parentheses thought so that instead of using a dialogue box, um, Sarah simply has a thought bubble when you drag that into your comic book. This drafting exercise is really useful for teachers because you actually get students to commit to a story and you can give feedback on that. So at this point, once a student were to write the full story, include all the elements that you expect, you could then collect this file as part of uh, your, formative, your formative assessment or checkpoints. Think about it this way. If a student jumped right into designing the comic book, laying out the pictures, getting everything visually accurate, and they really are missing the content or missing the skill, the writing skill that you're looking to evaluate, you don't want that to happen at the end when they feel finished, when they feel like uh, the project is done, that uh, the glue has settled, so to speak. So this scripting is a really great way to help guide their learning and also this is a way that you can create a gateway checkpoint. That is the idea that they have to get the script to a certain level, to a certain grade, before they can turn in uh, the visually designed aspects. So think about the weighting of how you want your content versus your skills to appear. So let's move on to actually starting the comic. Now that you have a basic uh, script, let's click on the Start Comic button up in the top. I'm going to select one that um, starts us off with a blank template. You'll see that the script has moved up to the top. And now I have a comic page layout. So I'm going to zoom out of that just so you can see. Along the right hand side, I have the layouts. You'll see that I can choose from different frame layouts. I'm going to drag one over here into my box below so that those frames start to show up. Now that as a student I've received feedback on this comic book, now I can start dragging these items in and designing the frames themselves. So I can drag John in here and you'll see that it automatically makes that speech bubble. I can drag Sarah and Jim's response in there as well. As I need to adjust different things, perhaps this picture or frame uh, just isn't big enough, notice how I can drag and drop and move the different attribution, uh, the, that is those little triangles popping out. I can make those uh, speech bubbles apply to different people. Let's scroll up and then take a look at how a caption looks different. So this keyword caption triggered this box with ABC in it. I said that this is often used for narration in the background. So this is not something that a character is necessarily saying in the comic book. And then also, here's how the title automatically appears. And I'll position that up at the top of the screen. So that is uh, Comic Life 3's scripting experience. Uh, keep in mind that if you are going to collect this, uh, that students will want to save it. Um, they can save as and save it in a particular spot. They can also export uh, certain items to uh, PDF. So if you're having trouble submitting to Edmodo or via email, there are different export options. And of course, you can print um, and select just the script and have the script just printed as well. So watch out for those radio buttons in the print screen. This is also one way that if you select script only, you can save a PDF. So that is scripting in Comic Life 3 in case you missed it.